Hi guys, Danny Atkinson here. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. I hope they are all having a great day. Mom and I are safe and sound back in New York from our trip uh, out to Nashville and Graceland. And we had an amazing time and I wanted to share with you all my experience at Graceland. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I am going to walk you through the entire thing from the moment that I got to the house and all of my favorite moments and um, share with you guys some photos that I took. I did sneak video a couple of times. I did also get told um, stop videoing, but uh, since I couldn't stream it, you know, and be live with you all as I walk through the house, I kind of want to tour you through it from my perspective and show, share with you my experience. The first thing that I want to say is it was absolutely incredible to be at Graceland, to stand in front of those gates, to stand in front of that stone wall, to know that that is the driveway that Elvis drove up to get home and that that was sort of his sanctuary. That was his safe place. They played a lot of footage of Elvis talking about Memphis and talking about Graceland and saying how Memphis was just, I mean, Memphis was home for him. And I asked him when he came back from the army, if he was going to um, keep Graceland. And he said, you know, with that cute sort of smirk and laugh that he does, he talked about how um, he wanted to keep Graceland for as long as he could and the whole time that I was at Graceland um, I really I thought a lot about how Elvis would feel about it now and um, I wondered if this was something that he would be um, you know kind of blown away by and to see all those names on the wall and uh, how the fans just flock there and how it's such a a landmark in this nation and how it really there's people from all over the place I mean when I was in the parking lot at the guest house at Graceland um, you saw license plates from all over the country that were there to see Elvis's house and that's just people that were staying at the guest house that's not you know other hotels and um, you know people that fly in and just it was really remarkable there were all age groups um, at Graceland and it was just incredible to see this legacy that he's left behind and then to experience walking through his home was just a feeling that is really hard to put into words and I'm going to talk to you guys about the whole experience. Um, another highlight for me was that I was for the first time recognized from YouTube and the fact that it happened in Graceland inside of Elvis's home was just it blew me away I'm still in a little bit of shock from it and I'm still blown away from it because I can't um, I, I can't believe it first of all that I was recognized I mean that is just like that is a moment that you you think about and you're like wow, that would be really awesome if that ever happened. And then it happens and then you're like, wait, did that actually just happen? And to have it in, to have it happen in my idol's home, I mean, it's just so beyond, beyond words, how incredible and amazing that is. So I am just like, Completely, um, and I'm going to tell you exactly how the moment happened later in the video. But just the fact that it happened, I'm like, wow, this is, it was incredible to me. It was just so freaking cool. Also, guys, this week's Thank You Very Much Thursday was filmed live from Graceland at the guest house. So please make sure to check that out. It was originally blocked when I posted it which I was so sad about because I really wanted you guys to see it on Thursday. It was like the special edition, thank you very much, Thursday. I was so excited for. And of course, it had to get blocked. But I do react to the two performances of Blue Suede Shoes from the 1968 comeback special. It's on block now, so make sure that you check that out and let me know what you think of it. So the night before going to Graceland, we ate at Marlowe's. And 
Elvis went to Marlowe's himself. So that is why you all recommended me to go there. I did go there and as I was sitting there at the table, when you walk in there's a lot of Elvis memorabilia but then as you get in there's not as much. So once we sat down, um, we're about to figure out what to order and the server comes over to the table and you guys know me, I have to start chatting it up, asking about Elvis, I have to. I mean, how long are you in Graceland for, right? You have to find out everything that you can. So I started asking him about what is it like to live where Elvis lived? And, um, you know, he said how it's cool, it's quiet a lot of the time, about three times a year it gets busy with tourists. Um, he, he said, if you really want to get the jitters, and you're, I was explaining to him how big of an Elvis fan I am, he said, if you really want to get the jitters, you know, the story is that Elvis ate here, and, um, you know, it used to be called the Roadhouse, and when he came in, that's where he sat, and he pointed at the table behind us. So there was nobody sitting there. <sighs> Good luck was on my side. So I asked, can we move tables? We already had drinks on our table, but I asked if we could move tables. He didn't mind at all. We got up, we took our stuff, we moved over. And um, so here is a photo of me sitting exactly where Elvis sat to eat his meal. I rubbed myself all along this booth because I was just like, oh my God, the king himself sat. You guys, this is the exact seat that Elvis sat in to eat when he came to Marlowe's. So. I don't know you guys, pretty freaking awesome. Um, I'm going to start out from the top of the day. Mom and I woke up and we went for some breakfast. We got some coffee before we left the guest house. We took this photo together. This is mom and I. And then we went out. We had some coffee. We went over um, to Graceland. We all crossed the street from the house. You go to the ticketing area. We got the... Um, the Elvis experience. We were really excited to be able to see the house, all of the museums, and when you walk into the ticketing, this is a little scan of um, what it looks like in that lobby. There is Gladys's Diner, there's a gift shop, um, then there are these theaters that you preview a movie before you start the tour, and there's also, right outside of the ticketing, there is Minnie Mae's Sweet Shop, which is named after Elvis' grandma, and there is Vernon's Steakhouse, and also an additional gift shop. And then also along um, on the other side, there are the, um, there are the museums, so Elvis the Entertainer, Icons, Presley Motors, and um, Growing Up Presley. So all really cool, and also that's where you'll find the Sirius XM radio station. So uh, really, really nice. So we got our tickets, we stood in line. Lines were not bad, but um, there was a crowd, but the line moved pretty fast. So you go in with about 20 other people, 20 or so other people in a group, and you go and first thing you do is you sit down and you watch this little video that highlights Elvis's career and sort of introduces you to um, a lot of his accolades and a lot of his achievements. So for um, Elvis fans, this is common knowledge for, for most people, but um, for maybe some of the younger crowd that is there visiting with parents, you know, maybe exciting for them to see it. And also it's just a good reminder. It kind of throws the numbers out at you and makes you realize like exactly how influential Elvis was. And it gives you just some pinpoint facts about him that, you know, might not stick out in your mind. So I'm gonna show you a little clip of after that video plays, you get on a shuttle bus. They and give you a pair of headphones and they give you an iPad. The iPad has a strap that you could wear around your neck. And it's going to prompt you with videos throughout the house that tell you about each room and a little bit of facts, a little bit of behind the scenes knowledge. Um, John Stamos actually narrates the tour and Lisa Marie hops in at points and also gives some of her perspective during that. So it is really interesting, but you have, once you're on the line, you now have the iPad around your neck and the headphones around your neck and you've got to sort of fiddle with this technology while you're touring the house. So you go so over, you go across the street and you, drive through those very majestic feeling gates. The driveway is long and a little bit windy and I'm gonna show you a little clip of me about to arrive. I had butterflies in my stomach. Check this. Here we go. We're pulling up. Here we go. So, when we first started the tour, um, there are, you know, you're with your group and there's another group up at the house. You wait for them to get started and go inside. So you're just sort of awestruck. You're, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe where I am right now. I can't believe that I'm going into Elvis's house right now. It's just incredible. So 
we have our turn to walk up the steps. As I said, I was really anxious. I'm like, I need pictures, I need pictures, I need pictures. I actually got a better picture in front of the house at the end of the tour. So that is um, a tip that I will give you is to once you enter the house, try to sort of, if you're planning a trip to Graceland, once you enter the house, try to hang back a little bit from your group, allow yourself to separate. You'll catch a shuttle back to the other side Take your time walking through the house. Really soak it all in. Remember, you do have this iPad, these headphones. There is a little bit of pressure. Do I listen? Do I take it in? What do I do? Um, you want to experience it to, you know, the utmost. So there is this little bit of how am I going to enjoy it better? What do I do? And there's also a group of people that you're with. So you don't want to take too long and get in other people's way. You want to allow other people their chance to see. So my suggestion would be to hang back from your group a little bit. Wait for them to kind of see, stay to the back, and then take your time. Um, I didn't realize that in the first couple of rooms. I kind of started doing that once I hit the downstairs of the house, but I'll walk you through. So when you walk up the stairs of Graceland to enter the house, it feels extremely grand. It feels so luxurious and you learn that Elvis purchased the house where I learned that Elvis purchased Graceland he did not name Graceland it was already named Graceland I didn't know that I thought that Elvis named it Graceland he bought it in 1957 he paid around hundred and two thousand dollars for Graceland and it came along with its name so as you enter the house you just feel sort of elated you just feel oh my gosh you know th this is the door that he walked through this is this is the door that he entered when he came home it's an incredible rush of emotions that wash over you i was trying to find the light that you all told me that elvis um kicked out doing karate i couldn't quite spot it but i was making sure to pay attention to the lights and i was looking for it i couldn't quite spot it i was a little bit upset that i couldn't quite spot it but this at this point when i was entering the house i was feeling a little bit of pressure of being with the group wanting my photos, wanting to feel relaxed going through the house and having the, you know, the, the headphones and just being unsure of how the best way to take it in for me would be. So I was feeling a little bit of pressure entering the house, but also overwhelmed with emotion. So entering the house, when you first go in, to your right is Elvis's main living room. And there are these beautiful, beautiful stained glass peacocks on this doorway that is entering into his piano room. And it's this gorgeous white baby grand piano. It is just so stunning. It is breathtaking. The decor is so rich. It is so beautiful. And it you have to stop and wonder how the heck did he keep this room so clean because they tell you on the tour that he hung out in this room that he entertained a lot in this room and the couches and the chairs and the white carpet they are pristine so here now the photo that my dad has of the living room from 1985 there were additional blue drapes that were hanging that actually covered the stained glass peacock so they removed those and you have a better view now of the stained glass which allows a lot more light into the room and it's really pretty but I think it's just important to point out that difference. Here I am posing in front of the staircase that leads up to the bedrooms at Graceland. Um, you're not allowed to go up there during the tour. I've heard that they preserved it and that they kept it exactly as it was in 1977. This photo shows me looking up the stairs in amazement and just wondering what it must be like to go up there. Here's a beautiful portrait that's hanging on the wall in the dining room of Priscilla and Lisa Marie. I think it's a really just beautiful, beautiful photo. That this is the dining space, and they said that Elvis's seat at the table had a perfect view of the television. And they also said that Elvis really liked TV. He had about 14 TVs throughout the house in Graceland. This is the kitchen. All of the appliances, everything is still kept in the same condition as it was before, and I just kept thinking that my grandma would have loved those, those stained glass lamps. Then you go downstairs into the media room. This room is decorated in the yellow and navy decor and there are three TVs in there because Elvis heard, and I'm gonna forget the name of who it was and you guys probably know, Elvis heard that someone watched three televisions broadcasting three different stations at the same time, so he had to have it. And they said that he loved to watch the news and he loved to watch sitcoms, so they said that um, 
This was really the room where Elvis would listen to his records, his record collection was kept in there, and this was sort of the entertainment area. Here's a photo of me in the media room. Getting out of the media room, you then come to see the billiard room. The billiard room is super 70s, super fun. There is this textured fabric on the wall. It's so interesting. It is so interesting. And Lisa Marie came on and Lisa Marie spoke about how she was always getting into trouble down there. She was always sort of being rowdy and um, and just having a blast down there. So After the media room and the billiard room, you then head into the famous jungle room. The jungle room was actually designed when Elvis went on a shopping spree in 1974 and changed the decor in the jungle room. So he um, did a lot of recordings in the jungle room. Also his band made it into a makeshift studio. So there's a lot of history that goes down in this room. And Here's a funny little video that I took of me sort of <laughs> admiring the doorknob that led to the carport. I think because a lot of the space in the house, it's open doors. Um, you know, when I actually touched the door handle, I'm like, oh my God, this is a door handle that Elvis touched. This is the door that Elvis took to get through to go to his carport. So I was being, um, you know, I was just having one of those little starstruck Elvis moments. touched this door handle when he wanted to go yeah. to his carport. Now, the carport currently is empty. When my parents visited Graceland um, the first time, Elvis some of Elvis's cars were there and my dad um, he's always said there were still oil stains on the driveway when I went there so my dad was able to actually sit in Elvis's Jeep his pink Cadillac was there and uh, one of his little snowmobiles was there my dad got to sit in that also so you could take a look at those photos here then you continue on across from the house through the carport there is Vernon's office. So when you enter there, there's a video of playing of Elvis that he did. Um, it was an interview that took place when he got home from the army and he did this interview in Vernon's office. And it's really cool. They ask him about Graceland in this video and he says that he wants to keep Graceland for as long as he can. Now, when I look at this office, I just think to myself, Vernon's organizational skills must have been a triple A plus because, um, once you enter into the trophy room, you then see these archives. You see invoices. You see checks that go along with these invoices of house decor, of everything, of the pool table, of everything. And it's so interesting. And they're in pristine condition. So Vernon, it's check signed personally by Vernon, and he must have just been an extremely type A organized man because the records were just phenomenal. So he did some good, very dedicated work in this office. Okay, so then you go through what they call the smokehouse. And in the smokehouse, you could see this little shooting range that Elvis set up and they found casings um, on the floor and they display them in this case here. And this room was called the smokehouse because Vernon used to use it to cure meat and then Elvis decided at some point to turn it into a shooting. And you're entering onto the, um, you see the grass pasture where Elvis kept his horses, where he liked to ride his golf carts. It's really cool and you know that out there, Elvis had a lot of fun, a lot of his leisure time took place there and they talked a lot about how they had 12 horses 12 golf carts there was enough for everyone to have fun and sometimes they would even hop on the golf carts and then ride down Elvis Presley Boulevard which I just can't imagine but then you make your way into the trophy building. Inside the start of the trophy building, you see young pictures of Elvis and his parents and where he grew up and how he grew up with such humble, humble beginnings. I was crouching down to look at Elvis's childhood bike and to see the photo of him on the bike. And this is the moment that I heard a voice behind me say, are you Danny? And I just popped up and I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, Am I Danny? Yes. And I, I was like, am I in trouble? Um, did my subscribers call Graceland and, and tell them that Danny was coming? I'm like, how do you know who I am? I was so confused. So he says, I love your reaction channel. I'm like, you, you do? And I just, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what? So here is a photo of us together because I said, we really, really need I said, we really need to take a selfie together. So big shout out to Travis. Travis, thank you for being a supporter of the channel. 
thank you for giving me that moment of a lifetime of, first of all, my first recognition from YouTube ever and letting it be in Elvis's trophy building. I mean, how incredible, how incredible, what, what a memory, what an amazing memory, a moment that I'll never, ever, ever forget. So Travis gave me some really good insight to some other things and some fun facts and he pointed me in the direction of looking up Larry Geller so I'm really excited um, to watch some of Larry's interviews and get to know some of his stories about Elvis. As you make your way through the trophy building, as I said, you'll see really cool stuff, some memorabilia like invoices and checks and there's photos of Elvis and the family. Um, there are renderings of Graceland which are really cool to see. There are um, invoices from drapery, from the billiard table. There are photos of Elvis by the piano. There are cute little artifacts like Lisa's golf, golf cart key, um, different things that they've preserved over time that is just so interesting. Some of Lisa's toys, um, her baby bracelet, their wedding, their wedding garb. It's, it's really, really um, nice to see. Um, one of my favorite things that I saw was a scarf that Elvis had signed to Lisa Marie in 1972. And I'm going to share a photo of it here. And he wrote, to Lisa, Long Beach Arena, I love my Lisa, Daddy. Wednesday, it looks like November 12th, 1972, but I could be wrong and I should look up when he sang at Long Beach Arena in 1972 because I thought this was so, so sweet and just a little a little moment in time, a little something very personal and I think it's really, really special that they share something so personal, so meaningful. Here's some video footage of Elvis jumping into the pool on a nice, beautiful summer day and then you can see that I walked outside and here I am standing and posing in front of Elvis's pool. Across from the pool is this little exterior building um, that Elvis built, racquetball building. And um, Elvis got really into playing racquetball in the 70s. And he had this building constructed, constructed, and he was really. You can actually hear I get told to stop recording. No recording. So after the racquetball building, you make your way through the meditation garden. <sighs> Being in Elvis's meditation garden was one of the best moments for me at Graceland. I really felt his presence there. I really felt such a calming peacefulness there and I felt a strong connection to him. I really did. It was it was just something that I've never quite experienced before and didn't think that I would feel as much as I did. It was so beautifully constructed, so beautifully built. Um, I learned on one of the signs that Vernon had Gladys and Elvis's tombstones moved to Graceland. Um, they were not originally there. He got special permission to bring them there. Um, Vernon is also there as well as Minnie Mae is there. Um, and then recently um, Benjamin has also been buried in Graceland. So that was extremely emotional to see. It was done so beautifully. It was arranged so, so perfectly and um, with so much care and with such beauty and such grace. And it is done beautifully with two benches on either side and um, just really, really peaceful and and beautiful and I'm sure that this is a place that um Lisa Marie will 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 cherish and will have many really tough moments there as well as moments of solitude there so um I I said many prayers while I was in the meditation garden that concludes the tour and across from the meditation garden there are some horses that you can see that are roaming um, the pasture and then you exit Graceland, um, you wind up back in front of the house. Um, at this point is when I had the time to take 
more photos in front of the house without crowds around. So that's why I suggest hanging back from the group. It does really come um, in handy at this point. So that's definitely a pointer that I would give to anybody that's going to visit Graceland. This is a photo of my dad in front of Graceland in 1985. And then this is a photo of me in front of Graceland in 2021. So after you wrap up the tour of the house, you take the shuttle back over to the ticketing area. If you've purchased tickets for the Elvis experience, um, you then get to see additional museums. So at this point is when I saw Elvis's automobiles, um, the icons, and then Elvis the entertainer. So um, just to quickly go through some of my favorite parts, there is so much amazing memorabilia preserved in Elvis the Entertainer Museum. It just blows your mind when you're amongst so many of his belongings, so many of his special achievements, the outfits that he wore. I'm just gonna flash some of them up on the screen for you because there are so many to name them individ individually. Um, one of my favorite things to see was the blue seat from the 1968 comeback special along with the three outfits that he wore during it. They have them set up on a stage that looks um, like a replica of the 1968 special stage. And then the blue chair is showcased separately, but the three outfits are up there with that. Um, here is a, something I thought was really special. These are images of Elvis's Bible, and these are some notations that he made on the passages. So I was trying to read through them and um, get a glimpse into Elvis's mind. I think that that is so special and so amazing. It's hard to understand um, what he was thinking, why he was underlining things, obviously. We'll never really know, but um, to look at it, there's one part where it says, America it looks like it says G7. I don't know if that's something musical that he was thinking at that time. Um, it's just, it makes you really um, feel just, oh my gosh, like I'm in the presence of something that is so much larger than life. And what was, what was going through his mind? What was he doing? What time of day was it? You just think of everything. Was he sad? Was he happy? Was he just soul searching? What was, what was going on? What was he thinking? It's really, you it's an unimaginable feeling. I, when, when I exited the museums, I grabbed a quick iced coffee and ice cream at Minnie Mae's shop. Um, it was delicious. And then I hopped in the car. I went back across the street to the house to sign the wall. This wall was covered. Every inch of this wall was pretty much covered. So I don't know how I found places to sign, but I did. And I've got you guys covered. So I want to show you here exactly what I signed. I did one for my family. I did a couple for some of my YouTubers. So Bob and Tina and then Deb. I got your names up there. And then I did one from all of us together as a community. Because without Elvis, I don't think we'd all be here today on my community, sharing the love for music, sharing our love and admiration for Elvis, and um, just trying to keep him and his presence alive because it is so far reaching and it helps every single one of us on a daily basis have a better day, puts a smile on our face and gives us some source of inspiration or comfort in one way or another. So I wrote, thank you very much Thursdayers, love Elvis, TCB. You guys, I had the most amazing time at Graceland. I was in the presence of something that was just, as I said, it was larger than life. It was indescribable. And I have looked at my dad's album of Graceland for years, since I was a child. And when my mom and dad went to Graceland, um, my mom was pregnant with my sister. So my sister always said, I've been to Graceland and you haven't. And now I can finally say, I've been to Graceland and you kind of have. <laughs> um, so it was just a really a dream come true. And I know that's a lot of your dream to get to Graceland. And I would just say I highly recommend it. Get there if and when you can. Um, take it all in. It was just unimaginable. So thank you all for being here and sharing in this journey with me. It was just indescribable. I love you all.